Hey guys, the car scene here coming at you with a new video. Uh, this is a different type of video for me, and it's new to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be trying doing a comparison video for the best size CUVs in the segment. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on these nine here. We're going to be looking at the Nissan Rogue, uh, newly redesigned, the Ford Escape, Kia Sportage, Subaru Forester, Chevy Equinox, Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, Ford Bronco Sport, and the brand new redesigned 2022. Hyundai Tucson. Um, with no further ado, let's get going. So the things that we're going to be comparing today are going to be popularity based on U.S. sales. Um, a lot of times having a car that your friends have, having a car that you can find parts on is really important, uh, especially if you're going to own a vehicle for a long time. Uh, the next one after that is going to be style. Uh, this is obviously subjective, so I can't say that one car is going to look uh, completely different than the other because you guys are gonna say oh well I think this one looks better and that's 100% up to you so you can kind of ignore that slide we're not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on it uh, we'll talk about build once again that's pretty subjective as well every vehicle has a different form of reliability especially when it comes to maintenance and that just comes down to the owner uh, value is not very subjective it's gonna be very numerical what do you get for your money it's gonna be really important on this list and we're gonna talk about that a lot um, and then features, where I'm obviously going to tell you what some vehicles get over other vehicles, um, and that might be a big role for some of you. Some of you that want to go off-road might want the Bronco Sport just because of how good it is off-road, and you know, no other feature is going to outweigh that for you guys. So we'll go over that a little bit. Uh, to start off for popularity, um, here I have the 2020 numbers for the U.S. market of each of the vehicles in order. Um, the Hyundai and Kia are really going to be super, super similar. Uh, in terms of design language, um, you know, some people might be brand loyal over Kia or Hyundai, but they're basically the same car, just like a Chevy or GMC is. So I have them separated, but you can kind of combine them together to see where they fall. Uh, Toyota was number one at 430,000 units. Um, Honda, number two. Chevy, number three. Nissan, number four. Ford, number five. Subaru, number six. Now, this next coming year, uh, 2021 sales year, you can really expect the Nissan Rogue to move up and the Subaru Forester to move up simply because they are, uh, well, the Nissan is brand new and Subaru specifically has been able to get chips out where other uh, companies like Toyota, Ford, and Chevy have been struggling to get chips in their cars. Um, Hyundai is also completely redesigned, but I don't think we'll really see those new sales numbers until 2022, um, just because it's a 2022 model year, but I think those sales will go up dramatically. Same with the Kia Sportage, considering it's due for a redesign. Uh, looking at style, a lot of these cars, um, a few of them anyway, are brand, brand new to the market, and the styling is completely different from anything we've seen in the past. Uh, Nissan Rogue is brand new. Tucson is brand new. We should expect a new CRV in a year or two. Same with the Toyota RAV4, and same with the Ford Escape. All of those cars are pretty aged, so we should hopefully see a new rendition pretty soon here. Uh, looking at the build, once again, this is pretty subjective. A lot of it comes down to maintenance. If you take care of your vehicle and do the maintenance that it needs, you shouldn't have any problems. But this order is basically just on a personal preference based on my experience of what we've seen in the past with these vehicles. Um, so I have Toyota first. Everybody knows Toyota is super reliable. Ford is actually number two just because they really make a finished product when they come out with a car. They put more R&D money uh, than I think any other brand does when they come out with a new model, and they really it shows with how long their cars are able to be on the road. Uh, I actually put Nissan third, and this is an interesting choice. A lot of people say that the quality has gone down since the new merger. Um, I think we haven't really had enough time to see that. So same thing, there's a bunch of Nissans on the road from you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and I think that's evidence that they're pretty reliable. Honda's pretty high on the list. A lot of people have said their quality has gone down in the past few years, but personally, I haven't seen it. Subaru's up next just because they have that lovely boxer engine. Their CVTs are and eh, but you know, not too many problems with them. Um, they do have the all-wheel drive. Once again, a lot of those are on the road. Chevy's near the bottom just because they switched a lot of their production over to Mexico, um, which we've seen in their full-size trucks has really brought the quality down. Um, so they're down there with Hyundai and Kia. Not to say that those bottom three aren't are bad cars because they're not at all. Once again, if you take care of your car, you get the maintenance done, you can probably put 300,000 miles on any of these brands. But once again, they're down there just because of the cost-cutting measures that they take to get their cars built. Uh, next is going to be the big one. This is going to be value. Um, I'm not going to read all these numbers off to you because it'd sound awful. Uh, but summary is, um, this also doesn't show the features. That's going to come up next in the features category. But bottom line is the bottom three brands on the build quality are also going to be your bottom three on cost. 
So we've got our Hyundai, we've got our Kia, and we've got our Chevy all falling under $25,000, as well as that Subaru Forester. But to be honest, the Forester is hard to find in the dealership for under $26,000 just because that base model is super hard to find. And that goes um, for a few of these vehicles. A lot of them are super hard to find in base trim, and that's just the way dealerships order cars. Uh, when it comes to middle trim, I've got those there. Not all of them are super perfect across the board when it comes to lining up with features. I did the best I could for picking out the middle of the road trim. Uh, once again, you can compare those numbers, but uh, Nissan is probably my favorite when it comes to the SV premium package specifically. That falls around the thirty to thirty-one thousand dollar range. You get leatherette seats, a glass roof, and full Pro Pilot Assist, which is their safety suite, uh, Safety Shield 360 technology. Uh, Subaru is going to come with really great safety features. Toyota and Honda are also going to come with equally great safety features. Ford's coming around, Hyundai and Kia are starting to come around, and Chevy's, um, they've got adaptive cruise, but that's about it. They've also got some blind spot monitoring on the higher trims, but generally speaking, your Japanese brands are going to offer you the best safety tech in that middle trim price range. Uh, when you're talking about top of the line stuff, um, honestly, uh, the big sore eye here is going to be the Subaru Forester. It just has plastic doors, plastic dash, basic infotainment. Um, and it's one of the more expensive ones. So I definitely, that's the one I'd stick away from when talking top trim. Um, the ones that are highlighted in here are going to be the Ford Escape. They have great finishings. Uh, same with the Ford Bronco Sport. Um, Chevy Equinox has really great finishings. Um, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan are all going to be in the same kind of middle ground there. And Kia and Hyundai are going to be okay, but not awesome. So like I said, Big Sorai is the Subaru Forester, and everything else is pretty decent. Uh, next thing is going to be our features. When you're buying your Ford, you're going to get that EcoBoost motor. You're getting a lot more power over the competitors. You're also getting their Sync 3, which is some of the best infotainment in the game. Um, also, U.S. built, U.S. owned. Um, you're going to see a lot of that inside the vehicle, and a lot of the owners of Fords love that about them. Uh, Chevy, you're getting Chevy's MyLink. Great app, great infotainment, uh, and it's a really great value. Chevy is super competitively pricing this car, and you can see it uh, when you look all through their lineup and it shows. The next one down is going to be Subaru with their Boxer engine. Um, they've been known for this for years. It's an opposing uh, head layout, and it's great. It's balanced. It runs great, um, and they all come standard with all-wheel drive. You can't get a front-wheel drive um, Subaru, so that's, that's great. Honda and Toyota both are going to be resale value and reliability. Um, they've been known for this for years, um, I also put that out there because they haven't been redesigned in a few years. They're kind of riding with the same old, same old that they have been for three or four years now. So, you know, nothing special, but like I said, if you, you want to buy it and sell it in a couple years, it'll still keep its value, and you probably won't have to do much maintenance on it. Nissan, I'm putting it in the value category, not for the same reason the Chevy is, simply because each trim level is super competitively priced in comparison for the features. It also comes with ProPilot Assist, which for me personally, I think is the best uh, safety suite slash highway driving assistant out there. Um, and Hyundai, I've got value and new design are the two features you're going to want to go for that Tucson. And with the Kia, um, I put cheap simply because they haven't yet released the redesign. And uh, you can buy a 2021 Kia Sportage for $8,000 under sticker right now at almost every dealership in the country. And also I should mention on our Ford section, I forgot to put the Bronco Sport is an off-road based vehicle. On the Badlands edition, on the off-road editions, you can actually get a twin-clutch rear differential that'll give you real good three-wheel drive off-road along with some pretty aggressive tires. The conclusion on this video is going to be it's up to you. Um, my advice is get out there, test drive cars. It doesn't cost you anything to test drive. As long as you have a valid driver's license and insurance, you can test drive any car. Get out there, get in the cars, see what you like, uh, see what you prefer. See what you can get in your local market. Um, some dealerships are going to offer way better dealer incentives than others. So go out there, go to your local dealerships, talk to your salesmen, uh, talk to your finance guys. See what you can afford. See what offers the best features for your price range and see what you like to drive. I don't talk a lot about driving dynamics on this channel simply because it's super subjective. We could all have a different opinion. Um, I appreciate you guys watching the first video of this series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, if you guys would like, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below letting me know how you liked it, and uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good one.